What's up guys and welcome back for another EVE Online video. Um, today I wanted to talk about my planetary production setup or planetary interaction. I believe these days it's called planetary production but it used to be planetary interaction and a lot of people that talk about it will refer to it as PI um, and I'll keep referring to it as PI today but just to get terminology out of the way I believe these days it is called planetary production. Um, Basically, I just want to sort of, uh, I think a long time ago, maybe 12 months, maybe 18 months, I did a video on my PI setup um, at that time. Um, and it was just one, producing one tier 4 material. Uh, these days, it's come on quite a long way. Um, it's moved completely, it's in a different system, but it's come on a long way. Uh, uses five characters, a couple of accounts, things like that. Um, but what I what I do basically is just talk you through my setup, uh, how it works, um, how I sort of operate it, um, and what sort of income you can expect, um, and whether or not it's possible to plex your account using nothing but PI. And so, uh, a couple of things to say about PI to begin with: it's a passive income, or at least it, technically it's a passive income. So, the all the stuff generates while you're offline. Or while you're online while you're doing other stuff um, but it still does take a little bit of manual effort from time to time just to like collect it or reset it get it running that kind of thing and so you can sort of be as active as you like like you know if you really want to you can get involved every 15 minutes but no one does that um, I but or, or you can do sort of like once a week or once a month but then the returns go down a little bit um, I for my setup, the ideal return would be uh, about 10 minutes, I'd spend about 10 minutes every day on it, and then every second day, about half an hour. That would be the ideal, but I'm a bit too lazy. So I probably do more like 10 minutes every day and half an hour every four days. And that returns me a pretty good earnings. Um, so, can we answer the question? can you plex your account using PI? Uh, this is where we start. So I'm on, I'm on WAD. Um, here I am in my epithile. So what I'm also going to talk about here is, because um, I do all this stuff in wormhole space, um, how can you stay a bit safer and reduce your losses and that kind of stuff uh, if you get ganked? The first one is the ship choice, right? So I'm in an epithile. That's because it's the Galente... Um, one of the Glente haulers that has a um, bonus to has its own planetary commodity hold. So you can, I can fit 67,000 M3 of um, PI into this ship specifically, and the whole thing costs two and a half million isk. So if I get popped at any point, I lose two and a half million isk. No big deal. Uh, whereas, like, obviously you're pulling in you'll see that we're pulling in quite a lot of ISK in PI. So, step one, get an epithel. You need Galente Industrial 1, that's it. No skills, no nothing. I fly it without any fit, just to keep it super cheap. Like, because nothing you can fit increases the cargo hold for the PI. So, the only thing you could do maybe is put, if you wanted to, you could put warp core stabilizer and some, like, nanofibers or something in the bottom here just to help you align faster but basically these are just throw away like I've got this in and it costs the estimated 2.7 done um, so that's that out of the way um, what is my current setup so I have doing this at the moment I have five characters across two Omega accounts um, which we'll look at today so um, like I've got Ward here but if I just log off real quick, um, the other two characters on here are also doing PI. And then uh, I've got Zake and one other character on here doing PI. So Stephanie is also doing PI. Quad isn't, he's off doing something different. Um, so all of those guys are set up doing PI, but the the nice thing there is like it doesn't 
you don't have to get everything set up straight away uh, you can build up slowly so I've been building this up over time and uh, this is now what I'm comfortable with um, and between them they're not they're not even maxed out right so Wad has the skills to run six planets um, one of the other guys on this account has the skills to run six planets the other three characters can only run five so I haven't even maxed them out um, so bear that in mind when we're trying to calculate how much I income you can make is I could have another three planets added to this system without any additional um, cost in terms of more characters or anything so this is a 27 planet system uh, although one of those planets uh, is actually a bit separate but I'll refer to that later there's a 20 26 planet system across five characters and what I do what I have set up is all of them so Wad and the other two guys on here all just do tier one extraction Stephanie does tier one extraction as well and then Zake this character does um, has factory planets so she has one tier one extraction planets and then three tier four factory planets and then a bonus planet which is doing something else and that's how I've got it set up so I do all of my extraction just at tier one so all of these planets are just tier one and what that means is if we look at this one is all I have here is um, a launch pad uh, two storage units and then obviously one extractor head because I'm only extracting one tier one resource um, and then just as many factories as I need to churn out that one resource and that's it um, and that's the case for every every one of these planets and for 20 uh, how many would it be 23 planets are just doing that tier one resource extraction depending on what I need so um, while we're talking through this I'm gonna go and start picking it up because I need to do my PI pickup today so this is just I only have to do this step every like once a week at most um, so undock in the epithal on all on all my characters um, reset the let me click off there reset the planet um, so I just again I don't bother like I've just I'm not making it perfect just reset submit um, because I'm I like I'm trying to make this as quick as possible launch the stuff into space expedited transfer put it over launch that to the customs office as well transfer and you'll see we did all of that while in warp and then we land on top and the way to stay as safe as you possibly can so like obviously anyone can kill me now but is align to the next one start aligning to it before you put it across and then when it's time to warp so as that builds up, drag it into your cargo hold, and then you warp away. Um, and so if you've been blown up, you are likely you've been blown up without anything in your cargo hold. And what we can also discuss in a second, let me just reset this planet while we go. Uh, submit. Launch. Um, so actually, this is video is video's turning out a bit more all over the place than I was hoping. Um, but you can see that I'm, pu I'm pulling a lot off each planet at the moment um, like so my full launch pad is full and a, car and a, um, a uh, hangar is storage facility is full that's because as I say I'm doing this once a week um, so what I do every day and literally takes seven or eight minutes is I just reset the extractor heads on each planet on all of my accounts all of my characters so just reset reset the extractor heads and go again and then as all this fills up over the course of the week then at the end of the week I will come out and scoop it all up so um, th this example I've obviously I've just scooped it all up um, now my ships full so I've got to go back but let me demonstrate on these last three planets just how quickly you can 
just cycle through and reset the extractor heads, right? So go to here, reset the heads because I'm not really bothered where they are. Hit submit, move on, go next. This one is full, completely full, this planet. I reset the head, move on, go to here, reset the heads, and move on. And like, you know, we did three planets in less than 30 seconds. Extend that to 24 planets. 26, uh, 23 planets. That's how long it takes me to do PI on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and just in tier one materials, you get quite a lot off, right? So I'm just going to drop these in, and then go and pick up the other stuff. So now let's just walk to this one, launch it into space. Um, cool. Um, so as as you've probably already noticed, this isn't a tutorial video. Um, like if you want to learn how to do PI, uh, I do have a tutorial videos on my channel from quite a long time ago. This stuff still stands. PI hasn't changed. Um, so go watch those videos for a tutorial. Um, this is just I walk you through my process and how I pull in quite a lot of my money every month. Um, but what I will say while I'm here, as I mentioned, okay, so there's two techniques you can do. First one is like at this this planet, we land, soon, as soon as we land, as soon as we land we start warping to the next planet. All the time we've got nothing in here, when we die we lose nothing, just two million for the epithel. As soon as we're about to warp, fill it up, warp off. And so, if we got ganked then, we would have lost nothing. The 33 million in PI is safe in the orbital platform. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do, so let me launch these into space, and we'll talk through what you can do at the next, um, at the next planet. So I've actually even had to leave some stuff behind here. There's so much on the planet. But okay, so we land at this one. We've already got some stuff in our cargo hold. So now, if someone jumps on us, we might lose this. So what you, all you do, someone someone jumps on you now, while you're slowly dying, drop it in the hangar. Dr just drop it, drop it in the customs office. And now you die, and you lose 2.7 million esk for your epithel. It's like literally as close to zero risk as you can get, right? Like I'm just I'm floating in a wormhole. I'm not that concerned if anyone's going to come and get me, because I've got nothing on me. I'm 2.7 million esk, and then I pull these two out. Uh, sorry. Um, then I start aligning to the next one, build up warp, select both of those, and as we build warp up, get ready to drop them off, and drop. I left that one too late, so all right, we'll come back to that. But you get the message, right? You get the picture. Um, I left that one too late. You do have to get it just right if you're going to pull it off. Um, but so let's look, quickly finish this one, do the same thing, and then we'll walk back to that and pick it up. But when your PI is in a customs office or in an orbital platform, they're the same thing. Um, it's completely safe. All that can happen is, at some point, like they, people can attack the customs office and they can destroy those and take them down, um, but they can't get your PI. No one can access that. I didn't need to do that. Customs office, access customs office, and here's my PI just sat there waiting for me to come pick it up. So we'll walk there, and then that's what done so um, as I said less than 10 minutes every day to go through all my planets and just reset the extractor heads not just on WOD but on all of my characters and then uh, once a week I do this with every character so today is what I'm doing when I'm doing it and that takes a bit longer so for six planets if I'm doing it without talking and making a couple mistakes and stuff um, it takes 
maybe 10 minutes per character and I've got five characters so let's say an hour just and that's that's probably too long but an hour once a week to do this job that, that's pretty good especially for the return um, so you'll see that you know estimated value of my hangar now is 71 million um, we've also then got the the three we already picked up which I think was 35 or 55 million we'll check when I get back and so that's just tier one materials I'm taking off one character but all the good stuff happens later because you know tier one materials are huge right so I've filled two epithals already just with one character so if you then have to haul this out and just do tier one production it's you still make good money but it's a lot more work because you're having to haul it out of wormhole constantly or if you're doing this in high sec or somewhere you're always having to take it to market so that's why you then turn it into the higher level materials tier 2, tier 3, tier 4 every step is a value add basically so I will now drop these in my item hanger please ignore the mess in my item hanger um, go down and find them here we are so Wad pulled 107 million off his planets today and that's for roughly a week for so tier 1 production with one person you could maybe get 100 million a week I then deliver it all to Zake who is my factory person so we'll send that stuff over to Zake deliver it and what is done. So then we log Ward off. We open up Frank. And we do exactly the same thing with Frank. Undock, open up planetary production. And I'm just going to go through this one uh, at speed now, so you can see what speed this can normally be done. Because um, Frank also has six planets, he's my other six planet guy. Um, so this is if you've got max max planets this is how long it will take you once a week to go and pick up all your stuff um, most of it's just warp time right because we've sorted this planet out now and we're in warp we just need to wait till we land from warp drag it into our planetary commodities hold and then we are golden And some some of the PI is more valuable than others, and we've got different planets. The observant among you will notice I've some materials doubled up. So Wad creates bacteria, and Frank also creates bacteria. Um, that's just because I have such a high demand for it, right? Um, reactive metals. I think I've got three reactive metals planets. Proteins. I've got at least three proteins planets. And just because the the tier four materials I'm producing need some more of some materials than others so now we're head to heading on our way to our plas plasmoids planets we'll be here very shortly um, the other thing to note uh, when we're talking about how whether or not you can plex your account and things is there is a uh, tax involved um, in moving all your materials around so you do have to take that into account um, for me it's pretty negligible uh, we own these customs offices and the tax is one percent um, so you know so say I pull a, I move a billion isks worth of materials around that means it's going to cost me one million in tax so that's the sort of the range right I'm um, sorry 10 billion in tax 10 billion not one 10 million um, that's a pretty good return so if you can find places with 1% tax then for every billion you make you spend 10 million fine but unfortunately a lot of customs offices offer a 10% tax and that's a lot a lot more to factor in because then every billion is costing you 100 million and also that's just in materials you move so that's um, up and down from the planet 
you have to pay that tax. It's not just if you sell something for a billion, you're going to have spent 10 million in tax. It's if you move a billion's worth of materials up or down, you're going to pay 10 million in tax. So, all things to factor in. Uh, people cover this off in tutorial videos, which is why I'm not going to go into any more detail than that now. Um, but yeah, so I've close to full on my epithal because I've just used my three planets. Uh, so I've got to go drop off, and then I'll come back for my other three planets. PI always looks good. Uh, so while I'm here, let's quickly control F9. Get ourselves a screenshot. Should be landing about now. There we go, look at that for timing. Drop this stuff off, stuff off. Drop this stuff off. No, thank you. Trying to be too quick. Then we go to this planet. Go back to doing it again. It's all nice and easy. Like, I granted setting up a planet um, is a bit tricky and a little bit time consuming. So, a f a, an extraction planet like this um, probably, uh, first time you set it up, will probably take you a good 10 minutes um, and cost 6 million ISK. Um, but that's because you have to place all the everything, you have to f f set all the um, sch schematics and obviously set up all the links and everything. So it takes about 10 minutes to do a, a, an extraction planet like this. Um, when you've done a lot of them, when you're on your 15th planet or 20th planet, then it takes less time, 5 minutes maybe. But um, the time consuming ones are the planets that we're going to look at later with um, Zake, the factory planets. They do take a long time to do. Um, maybe like 20, somewhere between 20 minutes and half an hour per planet, to be honest. But that's a one time thing. So for each planet, that's how long it takes, but it's a one off. That planet then exists forever and does what you want it to do until you, want, until you need it to change. So it's very much worth the time investment. Um, and you can set them up slowly, right? So you can start slowly, set up two or three planets, get all that going, come back a week later and set up another one. And then when you're happy with that, a couple of days later, come back and set up another one. And, you know, for my 27 planet setup, that was set up over the course of four or five months because I had to train up my P um, PI alts and things. Um, so, you know, this doesn't doesn't have to happen quickly, doesn't have to be really, like, super go-go-go. Um, you just do it when you sort of feel like it, get yourself set up. The point of PI is it's passive money. Um, like, as I said, I choose to do this because I, I want to generate some good income from this. I choose to reset my planets every day. I choose to. Um, you know, as you saw, I'm setting uh, one-day cycles, so one day 45 minutes are my cycle times. But they don't have to be. You can do a week. You can do two week cycle times. And so you can come back once every two weeks and reset your planets if, you, if that's what you want to do. Um, the return is less, but it, it's then just basically free money, right? If you don't, if you do want something once every two weeks and you still get a few hundred million a month, like that's a no brainer. But I want a bit more than a few hundred million every month. I want somewhere in the billions. And that's the six planets on Frank done. Um, we'll warp off now. <coughs> and we'll get this stuff delivered to Zake again. And then we'll do the same with my third guy. And then my fourth guy. <laughs> Obviously I won't uh, make you sit and watch all of this. Um, but... Uh, when we get to the factory planets is when it'll get interesting, uh, I think, again, for you guys. So I'll drop in here, and we'll deliver this stuff to Zake. We'll log in William so you can just see his five planets. Um, and then I'll skip forward to when we log in Stephanie, see her five planets, and then I'll skip to 
um, the factory, the factories. So th this guy is purely PI. He does nothing else. Look at ship hangar. This is a Nereus, which I used to d deploy my command centers, and this is an Epithal that I used to pick up my stuff. That's it. In here, <laughs> in his item hangar, he's just got PI, which he then delivers to Zake. And now he has nothing. That's literally, this is all he exists for. His skills. Uh, skill catalog, planet management, everything else, virtually nothing. Planet management, not too bad. Command center up upgrades maxed, interplanetary consoli consolidation maxed. You don't really need this stuff too much. Just these two. He's done. Right. Now let's. Uh, and that's exactly the same for Williams. Exactly the same. Uh, he might have one more thing in his hangar. Uh, he came here in a different ship, for example, so let's have a quick look. There you go, here's a rifter in here. And nothing, just a command center, so just PI. This is all he does. And he doesn't even do it as well, because he's only got five planets. But another bacteria, another water, another electrolytes. Like These are all materials we need a lot of. Um, so as I'm just going to go and do the same again um, with Williams, I'm going to go pick up my stuff and I'll see you guys in maybe seven or eight minutes when we log in Stephanie. And so uh, Williams is now done. This is his five planets. <coughs> We're just going to pull them in and deliver to Zake. Um, and what I wanted to say, just while we wrap up this account, is um, just to follow on. Like as I said, these guys, these two. Uh, let me log off. These two, Williams and Frank, are just PI alts. Like Wad, fairly obviously, is my main. Um, I. He's my main, I use him for everything. Uh, I don't want to not be putting skill points into him. So I pause the skill queue long enough to put a couple of million into each of these guys to um, set up some set up planets and then they just do PI. You can do that too, right? There's no, there's no reason not to. PI you have to be Omega, unfortunately. Um, so sorry all your alpha accounts. But if you're Omega, and you've got one guy, get your other two in and set up some PI. It's basically free money. Um, and you can, you used to be, so if you go back to my video um, on wetware mainframes, um, in that video, the market conditions back then, you could pull in one and a half billion isk a month just with your three characters. Like these days, maybe it's a little bit less because the PI value has dropped recent times but you're still looking at maybe at least a billion like if you do it correctly you set it up set it up well you're looking at at least a billion a month you can pull in just doing pi but like just with two slots that are doing nothing else and you can just get your main floating around um so what i'm going to do now is flick over to um stephanie first didn't mean to be logged in as zake flick over to Stephanie and I'll do the same again but what I will point out this time is as you can see by this big old nester on the screen because Stephanie and Zake are a different account different Omega I'm happy to invest skill points into them differently so what on my main he just gets all the skill points but these guys they are PI alts but they also do a lot else, a lot more stuff, right? So they, uh, Stephanie um, runs, uh, he's another combat pilot. I rat with him, with Wad, run Nesta fleets, all that kind of stuff. So you don't, you don't have to be able to plex both accounts with your PI. So if you set up a second account, it doesn't need to pay for itself with PI. 
because suddenly your second account can do other stuff. So I, you know, I've done a video on dual boxing nesters in the wormhole, and that pulls in so much ISK. Like that's 250 million an hour um, easily. So again, the PI is basically a bonus, and just more free money coming from this account. Um, and it's not that skill intensive. If you don't put in the fifth planet, um, planetary consolidation, interplanetary consolidation four, uh, takes like a day, like uh, I think it's three days or something. I think it's three days. So you can get to five planets in three days. Command center upgrades is also a quite a quick one. Uh, it does take 20 days actually to get to five. But so in well under a month, you can have five planets set up, maxed out, and then you can just go back to having your accounts like just train whatever. So honestly, for me, it feels like a no-brainer. If you've got a different, if you've got a second account set up doing something else, then definitely use it for PI as well. If you don't have a second account set up for something else, then consider it because get it started with PI, and you can generate even if you can't plex fully that account you can generate close enough to that amount of ISK that you can then earn the gap without too much effort obviously you can't not everyone can go and earn 250 million an hour but you don't need to if you're, if you, if you're doing PI that does the big chunk of the gap um, so now I'm just going to do the same again with Stephanie and we will flick over to Zake in a couple of minutes. See you there. Okay, and now here we are uh, with Stephanie's haul, and we will send this over to Zake, and then get to the good stuff. Zake, deliver. Alrighty. Lake. I'm actually just gonna log one in so that we don't have the uh, music for that screen. Um, right, so you'll see in here, Zake had a bunch of stuff delivered. But also, first delivery was 28 minutes ago, so it took half an hour to do those four characters, and I've been talking for a bunch of it. Um, so first of all, let's go get those materials. Let's go to my deliveries hangar, and here's everything that came in. So in tier one materials, uh, not including one other planet, because Zake herself also has one planet here, we pulled in 368 million. Okay, that doesn't sound like a lot, or or it does. But okay, if we're talking about in context of plexing our accounts, that doesn't sound like a lot. Let's put it in our item hangar, and in tier 1 materials just sat around waiting we've got 1.7 billion in ISK as I said I produce 3 tier 4 materials which are these 3 and I've got 440 million of them just sat here at the moment we need to remember that number 440 in case when we try and tot up what happens later um, and so this is just PI right so if we take these out of the equation 2 million so I've got 2.2 .2 billion in MPI sat in here at the moment, but as I say, this is the good stuff. So I'm just I'm just going to start real quick with um, Zake's uh, tier one planet. Just go get this material. Um, and I just want to comment while we're here. Um, there is no there is no correct way to do PI. Um, like my tutorial videos talk about. Uh, how you can get set up and what the different mechanics are and things but there is no right way to do PI so anything you see here is just how I do it you go to other videos and people will do it differently you might decide to set it up yourself there will be f there will be more efficient setups than mine out there but this is what I like to go for as my factory planets sorry as my um, extraction planet it just just this all of my extraction planets look the same uh, which you may have seen while I've been talking in the background. Every now and again I have another factory here if it's a super um, abundant planet. But for the most part, 
they look like this. So let's take this back. Um, but then I have my factory planets, of which I have three tier four factory planets. So I produce wetware mainframes, which are a super complicated tier four to produce. And then nano factories and sterile conduits, which are much easier to produce, but it's still tier four. Wet wear mainframes is just ridiculous. Um, it's one of the reasons that I make it though, because it was fun to make. Um, and now we're at this stage. Uh, there's also when I have spreadsheets and things to help me just keep track of um, what I need to take to what planet, basically. Um, and I could do this uh, if I'm if I'm being on top of my game. I, have to, I could do this every two days. This is and this is where the main money is. So when we do our maths at the end for whether we can plex or not, we're doing this every two days, basically. Okay. So let's drop this off. So I do the tier one gathering once a week. Um, and so these materials just stack up over the court, like in a week, and then I have one. But I do this, getting these guys every two days is the is the ideal plan. So let me just show you real quick my spreadsheet. It's completely untidy. Uh, it works for me. Probably doesn't work for anyone else. But I've got my three manufacturing uh, tier four materials and the materials that I need to build them. So this is what you need for uh, mainframes compared to what you need for nano factories and sterile conduits. And then here is just um, my extraction planets uh, and how many of each type I've got. So like I said, three reactive materials planets, three proteins planets, just one of each of these. And this, But this spreadsheet just helps me keep track of what I need to take to each planet for my factories. So if we go back to Zake, what that consists of basically is uh, for two days worth of materials I go back to here and I need each count here each one of these is 3840 units and then if you if I add all these up so I've got toxic metals in here twice so I need 7000 um, 7680 units of toxic metals to produce two days worth of wetware mainframes so I'm just going to do this now I know a lot of it from my top of my head so these two planets I just know from habit this one I have to refer back to every now and again um, but so let's get going so toxic metals into commodities hold 7680 reactive metals 11520 there's only three counts of them uh, back to um, uh, where do I want to go next? It is biofuels. Three eight forty, just one count. Proteins, two counts. Bacteria, three counts. That takes us to chiral structures, which is three eight forty. Electrolytes, water, and oxygen are the last ones. So electrolytes. Um, G7680, oxygen, one count, uh, water, three counts. And then just to check, these need to add up to 18. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I've got 18 like, counts of material in here, and that's what I need. So let's undock. Let's warp to and let's look at my planet. So this is my wetware mainframe planet. And all of this material that we're taking down now, and all of this factory setup, produces one wetware mainframe every two hours. So in two days, I can produce 24 wetware mainframes. So it's a super complex thing. Um, all of these are f level one factories, so going up to tier twos, tier twos, tier twos. This one, this one, and this one are tier threes, and that's a tier four. I get super complicated. Um, so, first of all, we will get the wetware mainframes ready to go here. 
we will drop these in there, start aligning sector Z9, get ready to pull the whatever mainframes off as we start warping away, and then we'll warp off. I do have to pay a little bit of attention, it sounds like there's an astro cloaked uh, in this system somewhere maybe, um, so I do need to be a little bit careful. but. As we warp, um, I clicked dock because normally I'm quick enough to do all this um, while we're in warp, but I'm not going to today, so I just need to stop my ship so we land on tether without docking. Because when you dock, you can't operate the launch pads. And so now everything's in here. I need to separate it out again. So for this, again, this is all off by heart. Um, I could refer to this again, and so I know for the first launch pad, I need one. Um, toxic to bacteria, but I know it off by heart, so it's toxic, one count, reactive, two counts, biofuels, proteins, and bacteria. And then drop that in, and all those factories start working. And then we just go to the next one. Um, this one starts from here, so toxic, chiral structures, electrolytes, toxic, chiral structures, electrolytes, two counts of water, and reactive metals. And then the third planet, we can just drop everything, uh, sorry, third launch pad, drop everything in there, and that's our wetware mainframe planet done. So I can now dock up. Um, but as I said, this is how I've set my factory plan up for this case for wetware mainframes. This is what works for me. Um, this isn't always going to work for everyone else. You do have to have a maxed out, like my upgrade level is max, and I'm very close on both of those. And that this is what works for me. Um, you might be able to find a more efficient way of doing it, by all means. And so. We've got our wetware mainframes, we'll drop them off. I want to try and keep them separate for now. Um, and then we just do the same again for our nano factories. Um, I know these ones off by heart because they're much, e much, much easier. You'll see everything is just two counts and it's the same, like, you know, easy stuff. So bacteria, biofuels, fuels, proteins. Electrolytes, industrial fibers, um, oxygen, plasmoids, and water. That's everything I need for this planet because uh, you need less reactive materials, the reactive metals, sorry, so they stick around for a little while, which is why I've got them in red on my spreadsheet, because they've got a different, uh... Oh, stop. Misclicked. Let's walk to that one, please. Um, and so, now this is a, a different factory setup because of um, how different it is to make nanofactories and sterile conduits. These two, these two planets look exactly the same, but they're very different to the wetware mainframe, because it's so much less complicated to build it and because it's so much less complicated you can produce double the amount so I can produce one an hour of these so 48 in two days um, and like it's just seriously so much less complicated I don't know why work with mainframes are so hard to make these they're all tier 4 materials like you know tier 4 um, why they make some so much harder than others I do not know but I'm gonna go straight to dock this time and so you can just see quickly how easy it is to do bacteria biofuels proteins transfer next launch pad electrolytes industrial fibers transfer next launch pad everything else transfer and we're in just just entered warp um, and you see everything is running nicely these are the tier ones 
when they're done the tier 2s will kick in and then when they're done the tier 3 will kick in no yeah, tier 4 sorry so tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 um, and the reason I do uh, that's worth mentioning actually the reason I do this in two day setups is uh, this is that's sort of the limit of the storage um, if I tried to go for a third day I'd exceed the launch pad stuff for when I drop it off and I can't place any storage facilities or anything because we're pretty much maxed out so that's why I do two days of um, tier 4 production so we'll drop this off and we'll do the last one the sterile conduits really fast um, so that we can get to the financial element so same again bacteria biofuels proteins silicon biomass chiral structures uh, reactive toxic and how are we doing for water we don't need any more water yet we will next time so that's how long that takes warp there get this ready to launch and you can see it's the same exactly the same setup as my nano factory planet so this is just what works for me but these these planets these factory planets take a lot longer to set up because for every um, every factory you have to put in a schematic and then you have to route the materials from the the storage into the each thing and the di lots of different complex routes so if you just look at this um, launch pad for example go routes there's a whole lot of routes and we had to set each one of those up um, so the factory planets are pretty complicated to set up and require quite a lot of thought and as I said and this is the setup I came up with other people come up with very different setups um, but this is this is what's working for me um, so I need to zoom back in this launch pad bacteria biofuels proteins this launch pad biomass silicon and the last launch pad everything else and that's done and now while we are docking up with this um, that's my 26 planet setup that all works nicely together um, I do have on Zake um, this planet which is a new one for me which I've set up which is a completely different factory planet um, which I set, I've i got set up just for my tech 2 manufacturing so these guys the star conduits the work with mainframes and the nano factories I just ship to market and sell and make money um, this planet I've got set up for tech 2 manufacturing so so right now it's been producing robotics and the guidance systems when I think I've got enough of them I will change these factories uh, the schematics in these factories to do um, guidance systems or sterile conduits or uh, no I didn't mean sterile conduits um, I've forgotten the name of the other one or construction blocks or mechanical parts like anything I need to build tech to manufacturing I produce on this planet from my excess tier one resources that I've just got in in here um, so that's not part of my full setup and I'm not going to factor it into how much money you can make because I don't take care of this one all the time so now last thing let's drop that in here and this is the moment of truth right so these 48 48 and 24 are what we pulled off the planet today and that's what we can pull off every two days um, and then ship to market so that one that one that one the current estimated price for that is 110 million yes estimated for two days work relatively passive like this bit we've just done with Zake is what we do every two days so okay so another quick breakdown there we do the tier one planet resets every day and it takes five minutes so five minutes a day for that the tier four factory planets we re 
would have to reset every two days, and that takes ten, somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes every two days. And then picking up all the tier 1 materials we do once a week, and that takes half an hour. That's the time breakdown if you want to run this setup efficiently. That earns you an estimated 110. Let's just uh, see about very quickly throwing that into Janice and just see what we get in Jita. There you go. Jita, you go and flog it immediately, you get 108. If you go and flog it slowly, you get 115. So let's call it 115 million before tax. I'm not going to bother calculating taxes now. But 115 million in two days is what we're doing with five characters. Let's assume a 30 day month. So 15 times 115 million times 15. So this setup with five characters not maxed out is bringing in 1.7 billion isk a month. So, and that's there what I mentioned um, halfway through the, the program. I've got two Omega accounts here, so I can't, running this, I can't individually sustain two Omega accounts. Um, but what we can, what, I mean, what we could do is divide this up by a number of planets and then multiply it by the available planets we could have, and then we can extrapolate from there. So, let's say we've got. Let's just assume this planet's involved as well. Um, we'll divide this by 27 planets, um, and on two Omega accounts, you can have a maximum of um, 18, 36, 36 planets, right? So times 36. So if I maxed out all the characters with their PI and kept a similar setup, we'd be looking at 2.3 billion ISK per month for two Omega accounts. So, you cannot, let's say then, you cannot plex two accounts, both accounts, with your PI. But what you can do is plex one of them fully, so you can, if you're already pay, if you're paying for your main Omega account, you can set up a second Omega account and plex it fully with the money you bring in then have a roughly 800 million ISK spending money which you can either put towards plexing your main account or you can spend it on other stuff like if you're already happy paying for one account you've got 800 million in cash coming in a month that's awesome like this is honestly a no-brainer <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah that's my conclusion uh, I think, P I, honestly, I think PI is great. Um, it used to be worth even more. They did when they made the resource changes um, relatively recently, and um, I can't remember what they did, but obviously they introduced some PI into some manufacturing processes, and they also removed it from other areas of the game. Um, it affected the price, and the price has been steadily going down. But right now, this is what you can make with two accounts: 2.3 billion ISK. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you found the video informative. It took me a long time to make, and hopefully I'm going to edit it down to less than what it currently is. Um, if you did like it uh, and you found it useful, please please hit the like button. Um, subscribe to the channel as well if you want to see more videos like this, or I also cover a whole variety of stuff, um, particularly focused around wormhole space. But subscribe to the channel. Um, do the occasional giveaways as well, which you have to be subscribed for, so subscribe and stick around for that stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you stick around and want to see some more stuff. Chuck a comment in with what you um, what you do with your PI. Do you, do you make any Tier 4? Um, and if so, what do you make? And yeah, I will uh, see you guys in the next one. Cheers.